Good morning, Barbershop Talk, South Minnesota. It is Saturday, and we are doing our 10 a.m. show here on the 29th. Get ready for some good stuff on our show, but we thought we'd start out with this. Have you seen this video? 47 million views. Cute thing with a dad and his little boy. Well, we got another one for you. You should have saw it on our Facebook. Ew. W. M. W. W. M. W. This is an M. M. Make an M. Give me an M. M. You ready? <laughs> w. M. Check that out on your Facebook, very cute, but we want to celebrate all of our fathers. We love that fathers are involved with their kids, small to tall. Fathers are very important to their kiddos, and check out this cute one on Facebook. As we did last week, we want to make sure we do our part in letting our community know, all of our communities know what's going on. Often all the great events are going on in our community and we do not share our information. So we want to do our part to make sure we know what's going on. The first thing you need to know is if you don't know, you need to know. And now you know the Minnesota Twins are now the AL Central Division champions and will be going on in the, to, to play to get into the World Series. So if you're a Twins fan, there you go. We are heading to the playoffs. Next... If you didn't know, Marcus Sherrill is back with the Minnesota Vikings. Did a quick stint down in New Orleans, and he's back with us. So if you love Marcus Sherrill and you love the Vikings, get up to see him. Now, I'm not a Vikings fan, I will admit, but I am a Marcus Sherrill fan, so we are happy that he is back in our community, back with the Vikings. Like we talked about last week, if, if there's individuals that are out there, or if you have family and friends that have struggled and overcame some things, maybe had a criminal, obviously had a criminal past, and are looking to move on in their lives to get on to bigger and better, and you need to get beyond your record. Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison is holding an informational expungement fair on August 5th on Saturday. This will be information about how you can potentially get beyond your record to move on to your career and various other things that's going on in the Twin Cities on August 5th. Then I just learned this week that Zumbro Valley Health Center and the Minnesota Department of Human Services and our Diversity Council are sponsoring an event called Mass Incarceration in the Age of Color Blindness. Dr. Jason Soul, and if you know of him, he wrote the book Prison to PhD, will be here on October 30th at 645 to talk about this very subject, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Color Blindness. And then if you want to get your entertainment on, Obviously, we have our Annie Mack and other musicians that we'll talk about from time to time. Doing a lot of shows. She's a great blues musician, and we love Annie. She will be up at the Dakota, my, one of my favorite places, on October 3rd. And then in Chatfield, she'll be down to see you on November 2nd. All right, future shows. We are getting booked up. We're going all the way into 2020. But just so you know, some of the recent guests that are coming up are the uh, that are coming up next after Senator Carla Nelson today. We have Mayor Kim Norton, the first female mayor of Rochester, Minnesota. We are so excited to have her on our show on October 12th. And then we have the new director of the Juvenile Detention Center here in Olmstead County, Eric Williams, on August 19th. And then as we get into November, Dr. Jonathan Locust Jr., from Winona State University. He's the new diversity director there at Winona State. He'll be with us on November 9th. And then November 23rd, we have managing attorney Lori Traub from the Public Defender Office. So we're happy to have these folks, more folks coming. We're looking to get to Mankato. We'll be hanging out with um, a diversity director, Bukata Hayes. So we've got a lot of stuff going on, but these are our recent shows. 
All right, now we're gonna get into our elephant in the room topics. Now I thought about this. If you've been in an African American barbershop, there are no elephants in the room. It certainly is good to introduce our topic. So we're gonna change this to basically keeping it 100. Our keeping it 100 section. So session, so get ready. Senator Carla Nelson's here. Bud is here, co-host, and then our, our cool and innovative social engineer, director Andre Crockett here. We're gonna hit up these issues in our Keep It Real segment. See you in a minute. At Greenhouse Graphics, we offer award-winning design services at affordable rates to help your business attract customers and ultimately affect your bottom line. Working with you one-on-one -on -one at whatever stage you're at in developing your brand. I want to help drive success to your business with excellent design and quality marketing materials. From startup companies in need of custom graphics, websites, logos, to seasonal maintenance, I got you covered. I take time and listen and care about your needs. I understand that image and quality mean everything in business when it comes to leaving a lasting impression on your clients and customers that last a lifetime. With nearly two decades of experience, it is in my DNA to create eye-popping graphics for your business. Greenhouse Graphics, making sure you always look your best. versus the Bears this weekend. We know we got a lot of Chicago folks down here in Rochester and South Minnesota. Are you ready? Are you discombobulated? Are you going for the Vikings or the Bears? And then we have our big issue, political issue this week. What are we thinking about this whole impeachment thing? It's an issue on kitchen tables. It's an issue in the barbershop. What are our, what are our thoughts? Then Rochester, growing. There's an article in the Post Bulletin, which is entitled, Rochester, Where Art Thou? Rochester's growing and going, and the small town is going away. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And then we're going to get really controversial and ask this question. Can an African American or a black person be a Republican? Yep, we're going in. Get ready. Here we come. Barbershop Talk, thank you for tuning in. We have a little bit of a technical difficulty, but as you know, we are grassroots here. We're working through it, uh, but thank you for tuning in. We are uh, privileged to have Senator Carla Nelson here with us today. Senator uh, has been working in the field for a long time, so we, we are very welcome to have her here this morning. But as we do, we want to go through some elephant in the room topics. And our first one is... The Chicago Bears against the Vikings oh, this Sunday. Yeah. Who's, who's going to get it? The, bear, the Bears. Oh, no, I was for the Vikings. Oh, Vikings? Oh, Vikings. Well, of course you are. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry. But you know, well, we'll see. We'll see. We will see. We will see. But uh, it's going to be a good one. It's a big one. It's going to be a big one. We need it. Uh, when I say we, I mean the Bears. The Bears, uh, okay. Um, you know, it don't make a difference to me. It's, I'm, neutral. I'm neutral. Okay. I just want, I, it'd be great for me being a Packer fan for both of them to lose, so, but, but that obviously that's not going to happen. But go Packers. Go Packers. Our second topic, and there's no way to avoid this, and I know there's all kinds of controversy around this one issue, but in our barbershops around the nation, you got to know we're talking about this. How we're talking about it, I don't know, but certainly this topic is out there. This is, week has been super intense with politics, obviously with the Oval Office, uh, impeachment talks with our president. Mm -hmm. No matter what side you fall on, it is an issue uh, locally. And I'm just going to throw it out there, say what you want to, about what's going on in our country. And if not, I'm going to jump in with the first topic. Any thoughts? This is what I'll say, then. <laughs> this is what I say. I think within our African-American community, this is my opinion, and even in our impoverished communities, they really don't care. Um, and, I, and I'll say because we've seen these issues, we've seen some of the 
issues with race over the years and how some of these things kind of happen to our culture, to our leaders. Uh, and I'm not saying anybody's innocent or guilty or whatever. I'm being, being nice right now. But I think in our communities, we're talking about it, but we're not as concerned about it as the media, both both sides. Uh, Donovan, that's what I hear too right. uh, out in the public. People are like, you know what? Uh, we hear these kinds of things all the time, right. regardless of party, regardless of anything. We try and uh, not uh, incorporate those kind of things into Minnesota. Right. We want to keep Minnesota out of that fray. Mm -hmm. But they're more interested in, you know what? Is my kid going to a great mm -hmm. school? How about, right. how's, my, how's Johnny doing? Right. Is he exactly. learning to read? Exactly. Uh, and, you know, uh, have we got a job in the family? Right. And uh, are we able to... Um, you know, we got a place to live. Right. Uh, you know, the important things in life. Right. That's what most people are worried about. Right, right. And they kind of see the rest of this as, you know, it's kind of out there. Mm -hmm. The other thing I've been uh, pretty um, uh, amazed at is people are very critical listeners, and uh, they don't believe everything that comes across the TV. Right, right. Uh, and so, or across the radio. And so, you know, I think that's a great thing. Right, that, right. You know, we've got a generation of Americans that are, yeah, they're involved, government's important, but they also know that the media has to get clicks and sell papers right. mm -hmm. and all of right. that. And so uh, most people just say, let me let me read the transcript right. or let me see the whatever. You don't, don't yeah. tell me what you think it means. Let me read the document. Right. Let me see them. And, you know, we live in a time now where people can do that. Right. They can go to the original sources. Right. And that's not to say that if these things are true, uh, our president isn't guilty, and therefore uh, the law should move forward on, on impeachment. Um, but I think, um, and it's particularly from our community, it's like, well, okay. I don't think most, of, uh, and again, I'm speaking for our communities right here, and I could be wrong. We're not surprised at the scandals, the issues at that level, because of the stuff we've done, dealt with within our community. And again, I'm not saying our, our fine president shouldn't be impeached. He should be impeached if indeed the allegations are true. Um, but the hype of it, I think, within our community, we're just looking at it and say, okay, we'll see, we'll see. So, any other topics, uh, thoughts on that one? We can go deeper. <laughs> I know there are people like, oh, Donovan, you're being nice, or whatever. But well, no. I mean, to me, yeah. it's, it's just another, something else, another scandal. Uh, if it happens, it happens. If not, we need to address, like senators say, the things that, we, that affect us on a daily basis. Right. Right here in our community. Right. Right. And that's what we have control over. So yeah. it's always good, you know, it's a sign of wisdom. Right. Mm -hmm. Is uh, the things that you have control over. Right. And I will say this, and this is controversial, if it was a black man, he'd already be out of office. We do know that. But that's part of the cynicism uh, within our community. Yeah. We're like, well, whatever. And I'm not, but that's, that is the dead truth. My opinion, of course. All right, our next topic is what I'm calling, Donovan Bailey, no one else, Rochester gentrification. Um, and I make it controversial, but the Post Bulletin had a great article out this week, and it, it was entitled Rochester, Where Art Thou? And it talked about how the Smallwood Town Institute is going away in Rochester. And they, they, were, they weren't controversial, and I'm not controversial, I'm not trying to be controversial either, but as it relates to diversity, as it relates to our schools and what we're going to see in 20. 50 and all the diversity that's growing here and all the things that are being built, Kenneth and Nelson and others, what do we think about this growing Rochester? Because certainly with it, it's been, it's changed in five years. It's changed in 10 years. It's, it has changed tremendously. And as we think about our community, our impoverished folks, our African-Americans, our minorities, are they coming along with all the DNC and buildings mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing? You know, I think that's a good question. And a lot of, a lot of my constituents wonder about that too. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, just put a little perspective on that. I tour the whole state. I'm mm -hmm. on the bonding committee to tour the entire state. You know, there are so many communities that are losing population, mm -hmm. that are losing job providers. It's a very difficult cycle. It's a downward cycle. Right. And uh, Rochester, on the other hand, is growing. Right. And exactly. that it's vibrant, it's alive, it's growing. I think that's a good thing. Right. Um, and of course, growth always comes with challenges. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and so it's up to us, the people of Rochester, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that that growth is done in a mm -hmm. sustainable, smart way. And there's a lot of good people working right. on that. You know, my my jurisdiction is mostly at the state level, but right. I'm a Rochester citizen too. My husband Carrie and I've lived here since. 1983 was raised uh -huh. three uh, 
uh, sons here who are now grown and uh, on their own. But, you know, this is us. This mm -hmm. is us. And so I think there are challenges there. But the, the, one of the greatest things about Rochester, though, has always been its diversity. That's true. Uh, That's true. Years, years ago, probably 15 years ago, mm -hmm. quite frankly, mm -hmm. um, one out of 10 Rochesterites were not born in this country. That is true. Yeah. And we are seeing across our state, actually, growing diversity, but particularly in Rochester. And Rochester has always been looked at as a place that um, has embraced mm -hmm. diversity and expects all people mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. fair shake, right. great agree. job, right. great opportunities. Right. Um, and so hopefully we're continuing uh, mm -hmm. down that way. Well, and certainly with our African-American community, as I understand it, not being from Rochester, was the IBM folks, was the African-American community, mm -hmm. and then the Mayo folks. But now, certainly working within the Public Defender Office, we're seeing um, middle class, lower class coming, and they're calling this home. Uh, so hopefully as we build this edifice that is DMC in Rochester, we can say, hey, we want uh, uh, those folks that are middle class and lower to come along with us. Oh, we must, because yeah. quite frankly, m most of the jobs that are coming with the DMC right. are, um, yes, there's high-end jobs, but there's a whole spectrum right. of jobs. And quite frankly, you know, with the declining birth rate of mm -hmm. recent years, it's starting to tick up again, though. Right. Uh, we don't have any spare bodies, folks. That's we need true. every person. Mm -hmm. right. We need every person mm -hmm. to be working up to their maximum uh, capacity, mm -hmm. whatever field that is, whatever right. area that is. And, you know, that's our job, to make sure that those opportunities are there. It starts with our kids. That's why I'm so laser-focused on education. Mm -hmm. It's our future. And we want to make sure that every one of our kids uh, has the skills to go out, mm -hmm. uh, be what they want to be, mm -hmm. uh, be successful, mm -hmm. uh, uh, participate in mm -hmm. helping others. So do you think um, Rochester ready for true diversity? Oh, I think it is. If it's not, it should be. Uh, and, uh, uh, so uh, I, I can't speak, you know, from experience, except as a woman, uh, yeah. being uh, some, sometimes often yeah. uh, in the minority, especially in my line of work. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I can't speak from the personal experience that you gentlemen Yeah, have. yeah, be, because I, I know we, we hear stuff thrown around that we are very diverse community and stuff like that. And um, first, we're a melting pot, right? Mm -hmm. But we're never at the table when you make when decisions are made, right? If you go we're a diverse community and 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 things affect so folks affect the whole community, then someone should be represented from the community. Mm -hmm. Right? When you when you make a decision first, I don't care if it's DMC and all the other decisions that what they make, that they don't make a decision for it doesn't it, it's it's only for a certain population. Mm -hmm. Right? And so we're afraid of what's happened is that um, is that we're not growing with the community. Mm -hmm. We do, we do a good, we do, we, we, so what happened is that those who call us up home, like my kids and others, we get you a good education, we get everything, and we go ahead and impact other places. Mm -hmm. Instead of impacting mm -hmm. impact at home. Oh, yes. And so you, you, you miss out because you don't, because they feel that you don't invest in what you already have here. And so you, you so, that's what's going on, right? Who feels like they don't do that? Uh, minority community. Oh, minority people of color. People of people color, color yes. are concerned that we're not investing. You, no, you're not investing. At home here. Huh? No, you're not investing in them enough, right? Because they, they can they can help um, with your disparities, right? Because yeah. because you, Rochester is very unique to other places, right? Everybody can't come here and thrive and do everything like that. It's hidden rules and stuff like that. Minnesota nice, there's nothing nice about it, right? And so those who are already here can help with some of your disparities. We've got the highest disparities here, but no one over at the table who look like us, right, can look at the policies and stuff and say, this is how it affects a certain um, dem demographic, right? We, we say we, it, it, it will, you know, and that's, that's what we, we're talking about. And a lot of people I talk to and say, okay, we really just don't know how to engage people of color right now. We really don't know how to do it, right? You go into our school system, you got three community schools, almost a fourth John Marshall, right? And you know, United Way, bless their hearts. I love Jerome, I love all of them there right there. But those who your community liaisons who they hire doesn't look like the representative of the school, right? And then all your community partners who come into the schools don't look like the people in the school, right? Now I understand it takes you, you big organizations have, you know. Um, the training and everything do it, but why not train the grassroots organization to be able to go in there?
So that's what I mean by we say invested, right? And so those grassroots organizations is the heartbeat of what keeps some of these kids out of trouble and everything like that, but we don't invest in them. Mm -hmm. So to get to the level, they can go into the schools and make, and make the greatest impact. Oh, so I understand what you're saying now. I get that. Yeah. And, you know, that is always a challenge, but I think we need to, um, and we are taking some steps in the right direction. Uh, this year we passed a cradle to career, mm -hmm. uh, which is similar. It's a, it's a, it's the um, neighborhood partnerships. So it's like the NAS, the North Side Achievement Zone, yep. the St. Paul Promise neighborhoods. You right. might be aware of mm -hmm. those. Uh, the educational partnerships, they're called. Uh, and that's what it is, it's partnerships. Uh, and uh, they have been highly successful. Mm -hmm. And we have one that's starting in Rochester now called Cradle to Career. Uh, that's something that we just passed. It'll, it will follow that same educational partnership model where it's partnering with the community. And I, I kind of hear that that's what you're yeah, looking but for. Yeah, in, in the North Coast, all this human cat is ran by minorities. Yes. Yes, you, you, you said that about, so it's different. Again, we're saying that we want to be able to run stuff ourselves too, because we can have the greatest impact. If it's going to be true yeah. partnership, we have to partner, have to be a partnership at the highest level, right? And so yeah. it, that's what we're saying. It's a little different. Trade the career, I, I mean, I'm familiar with it, and I, I think it's going to be impactful. But is it going to close the gap, right? Well, there's not, unfortunately, there's not a one silver bullet or one silver yeah. answer for yeah. closing the gap. But I believe that um, education is the great equalizer. Uh, education is the great equalizer. Mm -hmm. I believe it's the moral issue of our day, the economic issue of our day, and the racial issue of, of our day. That's why um, my professional career uh, has been in education, mm -hmm. uh, working in Holmes Elementary School, mm -hmm. which was considered our most diverse yeah, yeah, uh, setting yeah. at that mm -hmm. time, Willow Creek. Mm -hmm. uh, I also taught there, and now chair chairwoman of the Education, Finance, and Policy Committee in the Minnesota Senate. So we are very focused on education because education is the great equalizer. And so we talked about, earlier we talked about housing disparities, and health disparities, um, education disparities. Really, education is the key. We and these young children, we wanna make sure that all of our kids are uh, great readers by the end of third grade, early literacy. Uh, and But there's we found there's even a building block before the early literacy. And that is we've gotta make sure that kids are ready for kindergarten when we get there. And that's where things like uh, cradle to career will be very helpful. Uh, early childhood education so that when kids get into kindergarten, they're ready to learn and be successful. But I think, uh, and it's a, it's a long process, taken way too long, I know, but um, we have to start with our future, which is our kids, and making sure they're well educated. Yeah. And then, and then uh, getting more people involved at all the tables uh, and including as elected officials. Yes. And uh, so I think it's important to encourage people to get involved at all different levels. Um, I, I got involved purely by accident. Mm. Uh, I was, um, we, Terry and I had moved uh, into a new part of town. There's a lot of woods behind mm -hmm. us and I just had the city forester who I'd never called anyone in the city before, but I thought somebody should know something about these trees and what we should keep and what we shouldn't. So, so he came and talked to me about that and then he also told me about uh, this thing that was happening uh, at the park department mm -hmm. at the city hall. I thought, well, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right because that's very against what was written down in yeah. our documents here. Yeah. And so I thought, well, this is, I was very shy, very, very shy. And you? I hard to believe. Oh, I was extremely <laughs> shy. But I found something yeah. that took me out of my shyness. Right. And that was injustice. I just thought it was wrong. I didn't know how anyone could unilaterally uh, change a contract. Uh, and so that just started me learning more, asking more questions. I uh, found out uh, that there was going to be this meeting and did things that I now found out were campaigning. I went around and knocked on all my neighbors' doors and gave them a flyer and said, you got to get down to this meeting. And it was a year-long process. And uh, eventually, uh, we got the park. And there was just an issue where they were trying to do some things so they wouldn't have to put in a park, mm -hmm. even though the ordinance was calling for that. So. Um, it was a very small thing, but it taught me a very important lesson, and it kind of gets to your point, Andre. And it taught me, as I went to all these meetings, and everybody would be speaking, and everybody was on somebody's dime, and there I was. And I thought, who is representing me and my neighbors? And that made me realize that you have to be there. Right. You have to be, and that's what you're telling me. You have to be involved. Mm -hmm. Believe me, if you don't 
uh, if you're not involved, if you don't set your agenda, somebody else is going to do it for you. Right. And exactly. so we always want to encourage people to get out, get involved. Uh, and it starts can start with some very little thing, like some little neighborhood thing that I was involved in. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. Uh, and so I just encourage people to get involved. I always send out once a month, the Secretary of State mm -hmm. uh, sends out a list of open appointments in state government. And there's hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. And some are volunteer, some are, there's a um, per diem amount mm -hmm. or mileage amount, and there's different uh, things for each of these appointments. I put them out on my Facebook page or uh, mm -hmm. via email because I want people to apply. Mm -hmm. And I think we just want to encourage people to be involved. Be involved in your government. Mm -hmm. Be part of your government. Um, you know, you can't be a bystander. Right. The government is going to do things to you, uh, whether you so like it or involved. not. Yeah. So get involved. That's very that's smart, Barbara That's talk. it. Get involved. Yes. yes. Get, go, go ahead. Well, our next topic, and I want to uh, throw a couple of dis disclaimers out there about black Republicans, but I want to throw out a couple of disclaimers. One is, Barbershop Talk South Minnesota is a part of the greater organization of Barbershop Talk and Social Services, which is a nonprofit. We are nonpartisan. We go right, right down the line. We will talk about subjects on both sides, all sides, but we are nonpartisan as, we, in, as it relates to what we do. And then secondly, as we go into this controversial topic, this awesome uh, honorable senator to my left, I think you have been exemplary as it relates to issues of diversity, at least as I've seen, and also Senator Sinjim. I think you guys are on the cutting edge, at least as it relates to the state level, uh, again, as I've seen. Uh, but I want to get into this issue, uh, elephant in the room, and we're kind of going into a keep it real uh, topic here. Can there be black Republicans, um, given all that we know, and, I feel, and obviously statistics show that there are not a lot of black Republicans. Nationally, we have the gentleman from South Carolina, who's a congressman. We used to have the young lady from Utah, she's a congresswoman, she's no longer there. On the president's cabinet, we have uh, the good doctor who's over, I forget what cabinet he's over. Housing. Uh, housing mm -hmm. Hut. Um, and then, funny, locally we did have a couple of uh, African Americans run for Republican office here. Up in the, I believe it was the Northeast, uh, Walter Bush, and uh, no, Kenneth Bush, excuse mm -hmm. me. And then Walter Smith, yeah. uh, two African Americans that were running for Republican office. But by and large, we I think I can say this: African Americans, certainly after this a recent presidency, whether it's hyped or not, we are not Republicans. Um, or or, or, or uh, statistics, I'm sure, will show we're not Republican. Republican leaning, Senator, um, as you do what you do, and obviously you have been very diverse, all open to issues of diversity. How, um, and some other questions will come. How do you get more African Americans to be Republican when the stigma or the stereotype is we are not Republican? Oh, and, I, and you, you mentioned an important word there, which is stereotype. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so first I'll just give you a little bit of background on this area. Mm. Um, there are more independents in mm. this area than there are Democrats. So in right, Minnesota, right, right. they're called DFL, Democrat mm -hmm. Party, Republican Party. And there are more independents in this area than there are Republicans. And there are more independents in this area than there are Republicans and Democrats combined. So that tells that. you that this area, and this is why I, one of the reasons I love representing the Senate District, uh, people are really nonpartisan. Right. There's a lot of partisanship under any capital dome, mm -hmm. and some of right. us try and uh, shoo that and focus just right. on the policies, the good policies. Um, but in, in reality, most people are independent, right. and they, they look at uh, the person and the issues, but mm -hmm. they do have to sort through the clutter mm -hmm. of the media or the what we call the silly season, the right. campaign season. Mm -hmm. They kind of have to sort through that, and that's where, you know, uh, you know, you always want critical readers. You want right, people right, that are right. critical thinkers and critical mm -hmm. readers. So, and then it also, uh, just out in the community, um, you know, I have a lot of support. Right. right? Uh, the black community, Absolutely. and I don't know if they're if uh, if they're they support all Republicans mm -hmm. or if they just support me. Right, it's hard to say. <laughs> uh, I don't ask. I'm just thrilled for all the good. Right, right, right. Uh, and so I would say, fortunately, things are not nearly as partisan as sometimes the media right. and the campaigns right. try and make it right, look. Right, right. Um, so I would say there are a lot of, and and also the other thing uh, that I can tell you uh, as a woman that I find mm. incredibly. Uh, just 
outrageous right. is that when people think all women should think alike just because of our gender. Right, right, it's right. like all women should think like this on this right. issue and you yeah. ought to be like this. Yeah. I was like, no, that is like the very definition of stereotyping. Right, right. And that's insulting to right. me. And I probably would think it's insulting to any, oh, absolutely. any group to be, to say this is who you are because of what you look like or what your gender is or what your, what your skin color is. So, and fortunately, you know, I think our society is being slow, but I think that we're, we are moving in that direction. People no longer expect to see a photo of people that all look exactly the same. True, right. So I, I think we're, we're moving. We never, never probably fast enough. Mm -hmm. But I think the public expectation is that our uh, people mm -hmm. uh, that represent us or that lead us are us. Right. They look like us. They are well, us. let me ask you, you, you were running for national office. And hopefully you'll do it again. Um, and obviously, if you were, if you did get the seat, you'd be in the fray of what's going on now. Uh, and obviously, whether it's stereotype or legitimacy, and I, I would, I would argue there's some legitimacy there. Certainly at the national level, um, I, and I sometimes have a brother who's Republican. No, he's not Republican. He is okay. There's Republican and there's conservative, and I think there's ultra conservative. And he's way, 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 way over it somewhere. He's got so, his own label. Yeah. Uh, he's from Pence Country, Indiana. Uh, hello, folks. Uh, but we get in arguments all the time, and, and I talk to him. Um, and, and my question is, why don't, at least at the national level, the Republicans have an agenda that is pro-diversity? It seems like they mm -hmm. just don't want to touch it or whatever. And maybe that's the media spin. I don't know. It might be the media spin. But it seems like, and obviously the Democrats do, and obviously when you see pictures of the Democrats, very diverse. Women, uh, the LGBT community, blacks, Hispanics, you see it in all the, how they promote themselves. When you see Republicans, it's usually, I'll say a white man and, and, some, and some females. White men and some females, right? Uh, Caucasian females. Why don't they adopt, and I, and I think statewide too, adopt something that is welcoming to diversity so they can attract more votes. I would think statistically, and this is what my brother and I argue about, you would think if they want to win office again, they would have a diverse agenda to get more votes, but it seems like, at least nationally, I don't care. Well, I can't speak to the national level, right. but I can speak to, to the here mm -hmm. and in general. Um, you know, I think there's a difference between identity politics Ooh, and diversity deep. and welcoming diversity. Mm -hmm. um, I eschew, I, I, I try and avoid identity politics, and mm -hmm. I think most Republicans do. I, don't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to speak you know, for everyone. But I think welcoming diversity is, is very different, and sometimes they try and get conflated together right. uh, to make some sort of political argument. But the reality is, um, and I can just speak for myself, mm -hmm. I, I believe that we want every person, right. everyone, uh, life is very important to me. I think all of us are created equal. There's no respecter of persons. That's that's my faith. That's what I believe. Right. And um, so I try not to do identity politics, right. but I do think that they're right. Mm -hmm. And I think that could be part of mm -hmm. why there's a difference. But I also think there's some people who are just uh, like vote counting right. and, and just wanting to do identity politics. Which is new. And so I, I just don't think that, that is really... Uh, really much in the right. uh, Republican DNA to right. do identity politics, right. but welcoming diversity, encouraging diversity, mm -hmm. embracing diversity, all of those things right. are part of, I think, um, who we are. Right. Right. Um, I'm a second generation American myself. Mm -hmm. My right. dad was called a foreigner. Mm -hmm. Couldn't even, well, he, had, he had, I know, I couldn't understand mm -hmm. it when my dad was telling me that. I said, foreigner, is that like you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was called a foreigner. Um, so, uh, but we have to leave those things behind us and, uh, and push forward. And the interesting thing is, though, if you look at historically, mm. um, the it was the Republicans oh, yeah, that's that right. embraced mm -hmm. Diver uh, that's so diversity, true. Em embraced civil rights, oh, yeah. embraced uh, you know um, freeing slaves. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was all the Republican It was, it was. And so I think today, uh, Republicans still feel all of those important right. things, but for myself, I refuse to get into the pit of identity politics right. because well, I find that insulting to right. myself. Well, that's good. And, and I know a lot of our folks, and, I, and I'm speaking for our folks here, and I could be wrong, if, if they knew Republican Senator Carla Nelson, 
they wouldn't vote for you just because they hear the R. They probably wouldn't sink any deeper. Uh, but that's part of why, why we're doing what we're doing, mm -hmm. um, have that conversation. to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we do here at Barbershop Talk. We, we are really having a conversation of diversity. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on because, and to a degree, I guess, statewide politics anyway, but you're outside of the R, although you have the R. Uh, oh, yeah, and you've only got two things. You know, there's 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 two things. You, you either are, are, are R or a D, so you kind of right. figure that out. Mm -hmm. But then the great thing is, is if you if you want to stay there and you right. want to be true to yourself and you right. want to be able to put your head on your pillow at night right. and sleep, right. uh, you vote for your constituents. Right. And you vote with the best information you have and you make the very best decisions that you can for your constituents. That's good. Uh, and so, um, and I would say a lot of folks uh, are in Minnesota and the Minnesota Senate are that way. Mm -hmm. Very focused on a constituent, not on the letter after their right. last name. And there's one other thing that's a dichotomy, and that is when things come up on the Senate floor, uh, a bill or a vote. Mm -hmm. uh, we only have two buttons. They're green and red. There's yeah. no, Are they actually green and red? They're actually green and red. Mm -hmm. And there's no yellow button that says present. There's no yeah. button that says I don't know. <laughs> yeah. There's no button that says I want more information or mm -hmm. I'd like it if this part wasn't in it. There are no buttons like that. Right. There's just two buttons. And so uh, those are a couple things that are just pretty cut and dry. Mm -hmm. You kind of choose what uh, mm -hmm. a party you're going to be part of, the Republicans or the Democrats. And then on the, vote, on the floor, you choose if you're going to vote red or green. Right. Well, that's good. Well, hey, again, we have Senator Nelson here, and then we'll get away from our keep it real or uh, elephant in the room topics, although we'll still get into some controversy, but we're so thankful that she's here. Uh, what committees do you serve on, Senator Nelson? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm the chairwoman of the Education, Finance, and Policy Committee in the Minnesota Senate. That's 41% of our state budget, largest uh, wow. part of our state budget. Yeah. I think that's critical because we're talking about our future. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about closing achievement gaps. We have one of the worst and most persistent in the nation. No doubt. And yep. it starts with education. And mm -hmm. it starts, as I talked about, young, early childhood, early literacy, um, career tech gap. So we need to do that. Um, and then I also serve on the Health and Human Services Finance and Policy Division. I also serve on the full uh, Finance Committee and on the Bonding Committee. Oh, wow. So, so you're, you're busy. It's a big portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, but it's an exciting portfolio because what we do really impacts people's lives. Well, Senator, I got a question for you. Um, are you familiar with the, um, the disparities of the, um, the discipline level in our school system here in Rochester? Oh, yes. Yes, I have followed that. And um, as a former teacher and an educator mm -hmm. uh, and chairwoman, uh, I've been following that. And I'm glad that we're seeing, I believe, some progress. Mm -hmm. um, and my question that, and you, you all might be able to help me with this, there's one thing that if this is happening, mm -hmm. uh, then there are some major problems that, need, that we need to take care of oh. yesterday. Mm -hmm. If there is an issue where a student who um, does something that requires some school discipline, mm -hmm. whatever it is, A to Z, and if that student is treated differently than another student, doing the same offense mm -hmm. because of a skin color right. or religion or language or anything else, hair color, you know, that cannot happen. Well, exactly. We expect, we need all of our kids to have uh, equal yes. and exactly. equal treatment in our schools. So that, and, and I will tell you, um, that was something I tried to get a bit more information on and it was a little bit murky to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and some people couch the facts to make it murky. Right. I don't want that. I want yeah. to know exactly what's happening. Yeah. And if there's any, um, if there's any dis difference in discipline because of what a kid looks like, mm -hmm. that is uh, something we cannot stand for. Yeah, and that's exactly what we're talking about. I, I know I value education. I'll talk about that. You know, it's a, we'll talk about education, yeah. health, and, mm -hmm. and where do we fit in at you know at the state level and the local level. But if I think education is very important, you know, and and uh, and uh, um, if that's the case, if a kid is missing school, right, we know that you know I forgot how the, the statistic, but if those kids are missing school and they're already perhaps already behind, then that means that those particular kids probably will never catch up in in our education system. And so, since we don't have, I think we probably less than three percent now 
of teachers, of a lot of teachers in general, or teachers of color. And, and we know that some of, the, some of the problems is that the kids are saying that they have no one in the schools that they can identify with or connect with, mm -hmm. right? Now, I know it's difficult. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving a pass on this one to get pride uh, teachers of color, right? To climb and everything like that, maybe not, right? But you, the second best option I've been pushing for is to bring in partners from the community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that looks like them. Mm -hmm. you, you, you talking about? And that's why I said there's no excuses, right? There's, there's no excuse if the kids are saying, if your kids, if the, the kids should have a voice, if the kids are saying, I, have a not, I don't have a role model to look up to. I got I to gotta go to the city. Hmm? Mm. I, I, it's talking about I got to see a role model on TV. But in my own community, I have no one to, to look up to. You tell a kid that he can be, he, he can be this, this, and this. How can he be something he never see in the community? How can you tell me he right. can be her, she, or him, or whatever can be a leader, and we, and we in the community doesn't we doesn't it, it, it doesn't exist for them, right? And so what happens is that they tend to go south, they tend to go other ways, right? And we're saying we're saying we're saying we keep saying, all right, you might can't get the teacher. But you sure have enough people in this community that can make that effect. That can make that effect mm -hmm. if you partner with those in the community. We keep saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. I keep saying the same. The same thing is, is this: you have a whole lot of us, mm -hmm. right? Who knows? We can help bridge those gaps. But until we understand the richness of diversity in our community, right? We 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 skip the tackle and say, okay. This is what certain people can bring to the table. And instead of talking about it's a, a long process, we can close the gap of those process. Because some of those kids that, they, that they're dealing with, it's a small percentage of it. It's 2 to 3% of those particular kids. And those particular kids are inner city kids or survival mindset kids, right? And there's no training that you can bring in that people with PhD and master degree can teach you how to deal with a mindset of a kid who come from an inner city. Except for another person who come from the inner city mm -hmm. where the shared experiences can help them navigate a system that was never designed for them to be successful, right? So you have to have someone come in who can help them navigate, you know, come up that world, right? So when an immigrant or refugee come over here, you know what? We we show them how to uh, fit in out and out and out system. But we never do that for a kid to come from Milwaukee, Chicago, and oh, no, no. Mm. right? Yeah. It's total. It's a total different barrier. So this is what I found. It's out. a culture shock. It's a, it's a big culture shock. So this is what I found out. Okay, so if I'm a social worker in Chicago, right, and a kid is trying, right, mm -hmm. kid, we won't consider a Chicago. We probably won't consider a kid trying to act like 60, 70 days. Mm -hmm. Three hundred sixty-five. You you see you, you see. <laughs> so now so now I come here, right? Three days. Boom, I got the letter. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you, 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 yeah. see, you see what I'm talking about? So now I got a letter, I already got a lot of pressure. By the time I'm a single mom, I got all this pressure, this, this, and this. And first thing we do in a culture is that because, they, they, you know, they might hard to do a bill, do this, they don't open up the letters. Right? Because that's one more thing added to everything else, the layers and everything. Right? But what we have to do instead of just sitting in letters and threatening them that you know, mm -hmm. you know, threatening them and stuff. So now we need to understand, right? I, they just came from somewhere else, and where they came from, the educational system is different than our system. So now, how do how do now? And so now you send them a letter. And now, now what it is now? They don't trust. The, they don't trust nobody, right? You see, tell mom. Yes, yeah, mom don't trust anybody because the first thing you say the kid is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you see you see you, you see yes, them out. Yes. Instead of saying, okay, we know that, they, so we know we have a population, right, of migrating here for the kids to get a better life and better education. Mm -hmm. And because of the disconnect, their kids end up in a judicial system. Mm -hmm. We want to avoid that at all costs. You can't, I, we want to avoid it, but it's not happening, right? Not happening. It's not happening because they, they don't see, they, you know, as a community, as a, as a, as a state, we don't, we don't see Inner city kids come from other, other places the same as you see uh, refugees or immigrant uh, kids uh, uh, who come from other countries. But you almost have to treat them the same way because it's a whole different world we yeah. come from. 
he brought up a really good point. And when you first started uh, visiting and uh, telling me about this, I was thinking of something that's happening in the Rochester STEM Academy when you talked about bringing in the community. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what happens there is um, if there, and I've, I've been there when I've seen this happen, if there's a student who uh, is having a discipline problem or disrupting the class in such a way that the teacher needs to send him or her out of the room, mm -hmm. you know who's in the hallways? The community leaders. Oh, wow. Those community leaders are the hall monitors. Those community leaders are there. That's and all cool. That's, they don't, and that student and that community leader uh, have a discussion, and I can guarantee you by the time that child gets home, his mom or dad, right. they know what's happening. Right. And, and, and it's in their language, and there's the, there could be a language disconnect that this right. community leader takes, takes that on. And so that has been a remarkable model to see, it is. but you mentioned uh, that you know they were doing that for maybe uh, people from different cult yes. uh, countries. Yes. Uh, and you, your point that kids coming in from inner cities that have the trauma, yes, or, uh, back a, a background or experience in that yes. trauma, and so I think you really bring up a good point. And now I don't know, um, you know, if our schools in general. You know, can volunteers be in the school? Can volunteers participate uh, and be in that school and be that point person? Uh, so uh, when a child uh, needs to have some sort of redirection, I almost hate to call it discipline, but redirection, there is a community member there mm -hmm. who understands uh, the child's background or the environment and perhaps the lack of trust. Uh, you know, that's a key thing. And I'll just mention one kind of nerdy thing, uh, and that is that um, kids uh, who are resilient, kids who come out of a, a difficult environment or a terrible tragedy has happened in their young life, there's one characteristic that is the same about kids that are resilient. And this is, there's one adult. There's okay, one yeah, adult yeah. in that child's life yeah. that that kid knows this person is on my side. Yes. They're standing up for me. Right. They're helping me. And um, I think there's a lot of room for um, community volunteers, uh, church volunteers, to be a part of that. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. And so what we're, we're saying, I understand that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I always want to tell this because I work with a diverse group, a community. What I mean with Sudanese, um, uh, 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 all of them, Hispanics yeah. and all of them, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that because we are American-born, Right, that we overlook some of the things with which our counterparts did not teach us. Right, we oh, we, we tend to oh, we tend to really overlook that. So what do you, I think you brought up a good point. What do you think mm -hmm. would be helpful there? So what, what, what I think would, would be would be helpful for here, right? So if we look at the disparities, right, and it really breaks it down, it says blacks, right? And that said immigrants. Is it talking about? Mm -hmm. we, we're not afraid to talk about, you know, we're one of the most forgiving people you will ever meet, black people. But the problem is that we tend to sugarcoat it, not want to talk about it, so we never get healed. Mm -hmm. All we're saying is that you want to allow it to get healed. Because we talk about everybody else, right? Now, we, now we're, not, we're not saying we exclude everybody else. Because if you never allow us to get healed, our immigrants and refugees will never get healed either. I, yeah. You, 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 you Everyone needs everybody, to be everybody, everybody needs yeah. to be healed. Yeah. So we're, we're saying, we're in the community, and we're saying this. We're recognizing that some of the things that you're doing may be unaware, or whatever it may be, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's important. You might be in a position, yes. or you might be in a position, or you might be in a position, position to know that mm -hmm. and be aware of that and that's where helping folks who don't have that background or don't yeah. know would be really critical yeah. and um are you involved in some way no no school? no i'm not i'm not involved in school well, that buzz i want to dominate yeah. the reason why i'm not involved in in, in, in a school anymore is that and, and i'm speaking from experience right is that i i think that We don't have enough people on the school board or those in schools 
that we can feel the impact of how it feel, right? For a parent. Um, we believe that the kid can't thrive in the school system. Oh, that's you talk about they, they, they don't see it's it's hard it's it's hard to if 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 you have a a a a a, 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 a one of your sons who's on opi and deal with that opi the witness stuff, you'll fight real hard for them. Mm -hmm. But when it doesn't affect you that much, you won't do it. Right? You won't be so much passionate about it. So I think that what happened is that they're not feeling the pain. The, they being the overall school district. School and those district who make it up don't yeah. feel the pain of what, 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 what we're trying to say. We came here for a reason to escape the inner cities, right? Mm -hmm. And then to get here, right? And find out that the kids still end up in a place where they escape from. What I mean by that. If they stay in Chicago, mm -hmm. the, the the possibility of them getting killed is high. The possibility of them going to jail is high. And they don't get the proper education. So right? The proper education. Then there's no way out. They don't, don't have that education. education. Yeah. 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 And so now, if I come here and I have a small skill set because I got survival mindset skill sets, mm -hmm. I'm in now in a totally different environment. So I'm equipped to know how to survive, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna keep on some bringing that survival mindset, go to school or whatever it is. And then the problem is that now what happened is that now they gonna end up still because in a different community they gonna still end up seeing Donovan. Mm -hmm. Well, about you, about you teaching them a skill set to be able to navigate, and that's what they don't understand. That the, I don't think the schools are terrible, but they just don't know how to teach those kids how to navigate that environment mm -hmm. for which now they in. Right, and our our brains are so. <laughs> You know, what we put into our minds is often what we see. Mm -hmm. And so I can understand it's hard to, how do you, how do you get a mindset change? Mm -hmm. and, and, not, and not feel in that survival yeah, yeah. mode. You've all been in that survival mode. How do you get into a new mode where you're in an empowerment mode, right? Mm -hmm. People are empowering you. Sure. I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> well, I given what you're at, Senator, I wanted to ask, you said you um, the education committee yeah. or budget or forty one percent of the state budget is education. Um, we know the disparities as it relates to the criminal justice system. We there's been a long research on the prison of the, the uh, pipe, pipe pipeline. We know that Minnesota for a long time and since I've been in the public defender office for twelve years has a horrible um, uh, achievement gap issue. No 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 no. no. With regard to what. Um, uh, Andre is talking about, are there dollars appropriated to, okay, guess what, we've got this issue that's not going away. Yeah. Our Minnesotans of, of African heritage, we know that these issues are here, of which um, Andre, so we're going to allocate dollars, and I don't know how things work, to put it on that way, yeah. so they can hire teachers of minority, uh, of minority descent, or we're going to hire community people, or we're going to mandate that curriculum is thus and so mm -hmm. to deal with this evident issue, which, in my opinion, is larger than the opioid epidemic, which has been hitting us for the last 10 years, I guess, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. This is historic going back to the, you know, <laughs> the start of our country, um, but going back to what uh, Andre says, but there's no, okay, we're gonna stop this. Mm -hmm. No more achievement of gap, because we yeah. know statistically, this is impacting us. It's impacting the criminal justice system, we can do the research. I mean, there's all kinds of articles, um, and so, sorry for going too long on this, but are there is there a department of, of education, a department of the Department of ed Education, or dollars allocated or something that says we are going to address this issue? Yeah, there is. Uh, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Here's a few things. Mm -hmm. um, one, in, in my committee, I'll just kind of give you what is the grounding statement on mm -hmm. every agenda that we have. Uh, it says that education is the great equalizer, yes. it's the moral issue of our day, it's the racial issue of our day, and it's the economic issue of our day. Mm -hmm. We focus on students and we fund what works. Mm -hmm. And when we focus on students and fund what works, here's what we have found. Mm -hmm. uh, one is making sure kids have, uh, they're ready for kindergarten when they get there. Mm -hmm. They have that high quality early learning, mm -hmm. critical. Uh, and there's been uh, millions, tens mm -hmm. of millions of dollars uh, 
plug into right. early childhood mm -hmm. education, making sure kids are ready for right. kindergarten when they get there. Um, they are um, given scholarships. Parents who cannot afford to send their child to a um, preschool that is teaching a student oh, early literacy skills. That. Oh yeah, there are, there are scholarships. Got to hear barbershop talk. Oh yeah, uh, again, hundreds of millions of dollars of scholarships mm -hmm. to help kids, preschoolers, get a great preschool education, mm -hmm. okay? It's uh, economic based, mm -hmm. right? Uh, then we also, um, in fact, actually it originated out of my office, the Teachers of Color Act. Uh, and in Teachers 2017, of Color Act? Yes, 2017, wow. uh -huh, okay. uh, we wrote the Teachers of Color Act. And I'll just kind of give you a little background on that. Um, one, what it does is um, it uh, identified uh, teachers of color as a shortage. In other words, um, like I don't play mm -hmm. identity politics, uh, but I wanted to take all of our existing laws and make sure that teachers of color right. was an identifiable yeah. uh, shortage area that would qualify mm -hmm. for um, assistance in uh, training, mm -hmm. um, assistance in uh, one of the things that I found that was really, um, if we want more teachers of color, quite frankly, mm -hmm. uh, we have to start with our youngest kids, our students of color. Right. And so uh, we developed a program which, in it's uh, called uh, post-secondary enrollment options, which we've already had for a long time, okay. which is highly successful, allows kids who are in high school to take college credits in, a, in particular fields, right? Well, oh, they're awesome, and it increases graduation rates. We can talk, we do a whole show on how great yeah. those dual credits are. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I found out is there was no dual credit, no post-secondary enrollment option for an education pathway. Right, uh, right. That's kids true. of color yeah. are our fastest growing segment of our student mm -hmm. population. Why are we not tapping into those kids exactly. to become teachers of color? Mm -hmm. So in 2017, the Teachers of Color Act did pass. I had great bipartisan support. Um, and that passed, and now we have uh, uh, higher education courses that are in the education mm -hmm. field that right. kids can take while they're in high school. Yeah. So there's a lot of wow. double Didn't know that. things there. Yes, uh, and so we opened up any of those type of programs to make sure that mm -hmm. uh, teachers of color are um, able to qualify uh, in the shortage area for student loans, that kind of thing. We also, uh, another uh, piece we funded was the African Registry. We wanted to make sure yep, that students mm -hmm. were uh, able to get the rich history uh, of their background. Mm -hmm. And the um, organization that has put this out, the African Registry, they've done a remarkable yep, job definitely. providing um, lesson plans, um, all of the um, digital things that go with that, both to train teachers and then that the teachers can use to train the students. So African registry, is that in the school system or is it with the teachers? It's with the teachers. Okay. So uh, the African registry, and we funded it again this year as well, mm -hmm. uh, is collecting all of that data, data. that yeah. rich history, okay. putting it into curriculum plans and the visuals and the um, uh, the digital things that go with that, mm -hmm. so teachers can go in and find what they want for for teaching a particular thing. So those are just a few of those. Right, things. That, that's great stuff. Um, and I knew about the the registry. I've been on the Council of Black and Minnesotans a while ago, but this Teacher of Color Act. <laughs> so we probably need to go to our board and, yeah. and okay, how is this yeah. being manifested in oh, the yes. school district? And what's really great is I've already met. This is so cool. I met a a young dad whose uh, daughter got one of these scholarships mm -hmm. uh, to early childhood, to a great early childhood place, uh, Listos, I think it was called. And um, then he had been a paraprofessional in the school system, and he was going back to get his teaching degree. Oh, that's great. And all this was yeah. kind of, uh, that's the, great. The, with the, the, the dad's part was under the Teachers of Color Act, and the daughter was um, with the scholarship, mm -hmm. the early learning scholarship. Wow, so we, we definitely need to talk so, to our school board members yeah. about those. I'm listening to what you're saying, yeah. right? I, I think that, I, I think, again, Rochester's been a whole lot of good innovation, right? But imagine what our community would look like if we bring everybody to the table. We must. No doubt about, I mean, really, right? I mean, what you're saying is some amazing things, right? And this is, this is what I'm trying to say, the power of having someone look like, right? That most of the kids who went through my my academy end up being social workers. I created just I just started fifteen social workers. Oh, that's 
Right. Mm -hmm. Now, same thing would happen if we have teachers of color. We say we was like, well, we can't do it. We can do it. You talk about in terms of we can, like you said, we, we keep saying, and that's what we said. We it's it's happening, right? Mm -hmm. It's that the, it's a topic that I always say this is that. As a community, we never come to what we call black space, right? And so you really don't know what's happening, right? Because unless we come over to this board or this person here, it's not vice versa, mm -hmm. right? To really know what works over here. What works over here probably can be incorporated over here. Perhaps. Perhaps. I said, it's perhaps. Yeah. You know what I'm about? I said perhaps. Yeah. You, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. But we never give it a chance to see. Right. And and that's and that's exactly what we what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. If fifteen if, if you can produce fifteen social workers, right, what's working? How could how can we use almost that same exact model, right? To get fifteen teachers of color. Well, if I think we, we can. Right, you, 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 you're yeah. talking, you're, you're, what I'm trying what I'm trying to say is valuing you see you're talking about what what you have this going on in the community, not just say me, others or saying, okay, it, it may be, it may be, maybe I'm looking at it one well, mile, or uh, not right. But may, maybe, I, maybe, maybe I just say, say this. Maybe from your perspective, and I'll let them talk. Maybe from our perspective, we should say, okay, send in Allison, send them for whoever it is, we know it's best for them. Come over to where we at. This is what we're doing, and this is what we found out perhaps work. Right? I mean, maybe that'd be a better, I mean, well, I, I want you to help yeah. me out. Would that be a better approach instead of, you know, people being frustrated of saying, all right, we know, uh, be patient with us. You know what I'm talking about? Oh. And, and we're saying that, okay, we see some things work. We need to know what those are. Yes. I need to know what those are. You're talking about education? You, 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 you see what I'm talking about? So how will be the best pro approach to get more people who have influence Right, who can change policies and do stuff and this, 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 and that, over to a space where they're probably not that comfortable and really don't know a whole lot about. Well, I think that. the most important thing is to invite us. I go to all kinds of places and spaces, and if there is a, a meeting or an organization or something that's working, and you want to tell me about it, or somebody else wants to tell me about it, or you want to show me about it, mm -hmm. uh, the best thing to do is invite. Uh, you know, you don't know where to go if, you, if you're not invited. Uh, right. You don't know who to talk to if nobody's talking to you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, you know, uh, it's that reaching out just like we did today. Just like that, yeah, right. you come here today. I think that's a, mm -hmm. but can, I would say continue to do that um, because mm -hmm. I think that is really critical. And for one, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. And if something is working and we all, you already know what it is and it worked in, um, Helping develop 15 social workers. What was? What were those skills? What were those things that helped you overcome that um, the stress of trauma or the survival mentality? You might. You already know those things. Uh, so those kind of, kind, of, kind of things could be really helpful. Under the guise of the Teachers of Color Act, could we? And this is respectfully said. Uh, go to the school board and say, Hey, we. Well, Senator Nelson met us educated on this <laughs> Teachers of Color Act. How is that manifested in Rochester Public Schools? Yes, Could, you yes. can say, oh, what, what's happening uh, with teachers of color in the Rochester Public Schools? Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that would probably be glad to talk about that. And we can pull that up on uh, the, the Minnesota website and, and read the, that. The Teachers of Color Act? Yeah. Um, well, I can send it to you. If That'd you be great. That, I mean, it. that's one Why don't I for send you the law that was passed in 2017, yeah. Yeah. and then I'll also send you the increases in money that we uh, added this year as well. Oh, that'd be great. And it's ongoing. Oh, there's another thing that we're doing called Collaborative uh, for Urban Educators, and that's specifically about um, five colleges that are looking at um, developing educators of color. Uh-huh. Oh. Send that too. Send yeah. that too. Okay. And, and so I'll give you all the connections for CUBE, it's called Collaborative Urban Educator, and I'll give you the connections mm -hmm. for the African Registry, which is right. resources mm -hmm. for our mm -hmm. teachers, 
and teachers of color. All right, that's right. three things, barbershop talk, and we'll make sure we get those things yeah. up. I'm hoping three, my Terry yeah. down there is writing that down yeah. for me. Those three <laughs> that is things. great. You got the three, you got the three things? <laughs> oh, he, he wrote okay. Okay. You got it. And, and, I, and yeah, I think that what, what he's saying, I think that, that if, or what we're trying to do is we want to be the voice of the voices, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that the good things that you're doing get in the hands of the right people mm -hmm. that who needs to be equipped. Right. Mm -hmm. when, when I first came here, it was more it was more leaders than 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 it is now. You know what I'm saying, right? So we have a whole population of kids and stuff who never see role models and stuff, mm -hmm. right? And they're going this way. And so we have to you have to really know the demographic of your population that totally mm -hmm. totally have changed. Mm -hmm. It's not it ain't not the IBMs no more, not the Mayo Clinics no more. So it totally totally have changed. Right, and I think you're getting it. Where they're starting to be, a, you know, trauma-informed school and some other stuff like that. But the information you give us tonight, uh, today, is very helpful. It's right. Good. Of it's us good. saying now, in that and about you coming here and educating. That's what we're saying. Right. Uh, we don't know what's going on. Right. So it's a disconnect of saying some information coming to the right people that can. Get it to the hands of the right people, and then maybe we can develop what you're talking about, right? At the end of the day, we want all kids to thrive. Absolutely, right? We must. We, we must. We must want all kids to thrive. And so we're saying, how do we make that happen, right? By giving us information, right? Whereas we don't always have access to, it. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes that's why it's not an even playing field, because we don't always get the same information mm -hmm. that everybody else has. Well, that's a good point. And could I just add for yeah. your viewers, mm -hmm. um, I would encourage you to uh, email me, uh, Senator Carla Nelson, S-E-N dot Carla dot Nelson at Senate dot M-N. Maybe you want to put that underneath there. Yes. Tell them and just say in there you want to be on my mailing list. Okay. That's and great. I'll send out, uh, I'll add you to my email list, which kind of gives the rundown of what's happening. Yeah. All right. Well, so we want to be respectful of your yeah. time and thank, thank you for dealing with thank our you so much. technical. We're learning as we go. <laughs> yes. yeah. That is life. Uh, it's fun. It I, think, as we go. I think you've helped us grow, and we're, uh, uh, we'll talk with my uh, co hosts about that. Uh, but one question uh, this place is growing. Rochester is just growing and growing and growing. And obviously, our clientele live here. What are you doing at the state level to help this all this growth? And certainly, as it relates to our the impoverished community, the African American community, these communities that frankly can't afford to live here. And I know that's a big oh, yeah. topic here. Mm -hmm. What are you doing at the state level so that uh, this 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 growth, this amazing oh, stuff well, can be something for everybody? I'm glad you asked about that mm -hmm. because um, I think you're talking about affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing we know, uh, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, yes. you gotta feel safe. Yes. If you expect people to learn, yes. to right, do right. anything, they gotta feel safe. Mm -hmm. That means you have a home. Yeah. You know where you're right. gonna lay your mm -hmm. head at night. Mm -hmm. You have a a safe and secure home. Yes, yes. And with the cost uh, escalating so right. dramatically, it, it's out. People are being outpriced yes. of their homes. And yes. so, oh, affordable housing is a key thing. There's been a number of proposals. I had a proposal, which I'm going to continue to push uh, this next year. Uh, it was one of the top uh, proposals that the um, affordable housing, co the coalition on affordable housing, wanted to see, and that is tax credits. Mm. Uh, oh, that's what I haven't heard about. Oh, yeah. yes. We need to have the affordable housing tax credit okay. so that um, developers who want to build affordable housing uh, will get a mm. tax credit. We want to incent yeah. them yeah. to That's... build affordable housing. Wow. Uh, and I like the tax credit idea because our budget is always so stretched, right? Mm -hmm. right. There's so much mm -hmm. for education and health and human services and our roads and bridges. But I want to tap into the private market and I want to encourage those private developers mm -hmm. with a tax credit incentive yeah. to put out uh, and to develop um, affordable housing. Mm -hmm. I had great support from uh, the um, housing commissioner. It's had great support. Uh, we had good hearings. It just didn't get passed. So right. I'm hoping that something like that will uh, pass the legislature so we can get more affordable housing. And I'm not a fan of segregated housing either. Uh, I, I want kids of yeah, all yeah. uh, uh, income, mm -hmm. families, to done be able pretty good to, with that. yes we have, and this project would do that right. too. Right. So but what about good. transportation? Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of our folks, they can't, they're, they're starting to live in Stewartville, yeah. Orinoco, yeah. Pine Island, yeah. Owatonna, yeah. and I know Rochester City Lines is doing some things. Um, what can the state do 
um, even the transportation we've done here in this Twin Cities to, is there anything going on there? Sure, there's a lot going on. And you know, the one thing I would say is it's really good uh, that we have a variety of settings for people to live in. I don't think mm -hmm. everybody has to live in Rochester. Right. Some mm -hmm. people like smaller schools, small, yeah. smaller cities, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, more house for the money, lower taxes, all of mm -hmm. those things. Right. And I think that's great. We have to have good transportation right. to those places, right. in and out. Um, and uh, also from the cities as yeah. well. And, you guys uh, get that, that train going? Uh, I don't know about <laughs> the train, uh, but here's the, here's the thing I gotta tell you about the train. We need to have transit. Right. But trains yeah. kind of seem to be like yesterday's yes. idea. They have fixed yeah. tracks. Yeah. And they can't move them to yeah, where exactly. they need it. Yeah. But there's all these other new things, yeah. whether yeah. it be Uber or Lyft yeah. or automated True. cars. Yeah. You know, I dream of the day where <laughs> I can have my automatic car drive me up to the Capitol yes. and then <laughs> yeah. uh, drop me off yeah. and maybe go there out go. and pick up some yeah. Uber or Lyft clients. While I'm working, and then I could call it in to yeah, come that pick is me true. up, yeah. take me back. So yeah. I mean, we live. We're, the world is changing very quickly it, in that is, area, it is. and I would hate to be tied to an old, yeah. old, yes. old rail system. And we spend all that money, yeah. and yeah. the next thing you know, the next. Good. Yeah, and then the, then 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 the need is ten miles southwest, right, or right. four miles southeast. So you so you had a new initiative, and. Was it the P, what was it? Oh, P tech. The oh, P -tech. we should talk about that. What's that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I talked to Dr. Boyd. Yeah, right? it's very exciting. And, it, about, it, and so, uh, can you explain that a little bit? And and is it too, I'll let you expl explain sure. it. Can you explain it? Then yeah. I just want to ask you, how could we get involved in it after you explain yeah, sure, it? So, sure, you sure. Sure, those sure. Two guys so uh, P tech stands for Pathways and Technology Early College High. Hmm. It's a innovative idea, but it's had great success okay. in other states, you know, build upon what works. And uh, so there's this partnership uh, between a um, public high school, mm -hmm. which is a, a college, a higher education institution, often a community college, and an industry partner. Mm -hmm. And they three are uh, equal partners in this. Now we know the um, community or the community college, mm -hmm. uh, they work with the high school and then the industry partner, their job uh, is to provide apprenticeships, internships, mentorships. They work directly in the school with the school. Every kid that graduates is first in line for a job mm -hmm. at that industry mm -hmm. partner. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a, it's called competency-based learning. What that means is it's grades a uh, ninth grade, through 12 plus years one and two after. Mm. So it's a, could be up to a six year program. But some kids, and it's free, and some kids get done in three years. Mm -hmm. But they all come out with an industry credential or an associate of science degree of oh, some right. type and first in line for a job. And there can be one or more industry partners. We have several that are very interested in Rochester. It's probably too early for me to speak to mm -hmm. those until mm -hmm. everything is firmed up, but there's a lot of interest. And I will tell you that in other states, IBM has been um, an industry partner. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see, I wanted to get, I wanted to see what worked and see, okay, show me what's worked, uh, what, how many kids have gone through, uh, sh where are these kids today? And you can see, uh, interestingly enough, in, in IBM's case, all of the kids that are now working at IBM happen to be students at college. Wow. This is a wow. Yeah, and so and so. Dr. So, Boyd at RCTC yeah, is very interested. Yeah, very yeah. interested. And so and so, how do we? Are you on the Are you on the board of that or? Uh, well, I was just the author that wrote the bill, passed the bill, bill, passed the bill, the bill. Uh, got the bill, the bill passed. You passed the bill passed. But but to be involved is I stay uh, talk to Dr. Boyd because uh, RCTC is very uh, involved and um, conversations are ongoing. So what um, does PTAP mean? Pathways in Technology Early College High. Okay. So it's technology related, which also includes the health industry, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and there, if, there can be several partners with the school. And oftentimes it's a school within a school. It's not like um, building a whole new building and all mm -hmm. of those operating costs. Some, it's oftentimes a school within a school. And they've been highly successful, increasing graduation rates, uh, increasing uh, higher grades. Uh, most importantly, though, getting those skills that are needed for the jobs mm -hmm. of tomorrow, ones right. that don't even exist today. Yeah. And then they have this great mentorship, apprenticeship, and you talked about 
um, of kids being to see out a window about what's possible, mm -hmm. not just what they know, what's possible. And that's, great. that's part of contentment. Nice. Well, great. Well, to end, we definitely want to inspire not only our young people, but people in general. We have a lot of people overcoming past mistakes or problems, historical trauma, you name it, and trying to make it to that next level of life and, and whatever God wants them to be. Obviously, you're a, a great senator of our state. How would you inspire them to, to know that they can become, to ascend to be uh, yes. Senator Nelson? Oh, what would you say to them? I say? would say a couple things. Uh, number one, uh, never give up on yourself. Never. Right. We live in a world of second chances. Right. And it doesn't matter what you've done or what uh, bad breaks have come your way. Uh, you can overcome those. Find right. that one adult that believes in you. Mm -hmm. And do your best. Do yes. your best. And I have to say, get the best education possible. You take right. advantage of every educational opportunity <laughs> you have because you are investing in yourself mm -hmm. and your future. Right. Well, great. There you have it. The Honorable Senator Nelson, thank you for coming along. Thank you. To be here. Thanks Learned so a lot of good stuff yes. that we didn't know that's yes. great yes. for our community. Yes. Barbershop Talk, thank you for tuning in. Thank you.